Anyone who's spent very much time dealing with creationists has seen this list before. This was published by the Discovery Institute and is a list of roughly 100 scientists who supposedly doubt evolution. This list has 101 signees and reads, We are skeptical of claims for the ability of random mutation and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. Careful examination of the evidence for Darwinian theory could, should be encouraged. Now, the first thing which should jump out at you is the simple fact that this doesn't really mean that they reject evolution whatsoever. In fact, Michael Behe signed this list, and he has no problem whatsoever with common descent. Furthermore, as a scientist, it immediately jumps out the statement that careful examination of the evidence for the theory should be encouraged, because I would say that about anything. Quite frankly, if this list came to me regarding around Earth, or any scientific theory, for that matter, of course you should examine the evidence carefully. I mean, that's really not much of a surprise. But we'll ignore that for the time being. A common descent is the idea that we share a common ancestor with the great apes. Um, I've spent a significant amount of time in colleges and universities, be it as a student, doing research, an employee, and whatnot, and I had never come across any biologist, or scientist for that matter, that doubted evolution. I mean, it, it's a well-known fact. And I was curious exactly how many of these 101 signees truly did reject common descent that is evolution. So I set out to do it the only way possible, and that is I tracked down every single biologist on the list and emailed them to get their thoughts. Now one thing which became immediately apparent as I was analyzing this list and attempting to contact the people is that the vast, vast, vast majority of them have nothing to do whatsoever with biology. I mean, there's a gentleman on here who works for the U.S. Parks Department as a park ranger that supposedly counts as a scientist, but I actually included him with a biologist just for fun. Um, there are people in here that work for law schools, um, mathematics, and the vast majority of them are computer science engineers. Um, while I respect their opinion, I'm not really sure that they're qualified to give it in biological matters. So, and also to save time, I didn't contact these folks. I only contacted those that were in the biochemical, um, biology, or upper-level chemistry fields to get their opinions. So, after removing all the park rangers, electrical engineering majors, um, mathematicians, this is what the list looks like. Considerably different. Now, the email that I sent them to see this would be Dr. So-and-so, thank you very much for your time. I'm writing because your name appeared on a list of scientists who are skeptical of evolution. I was curious as to whether or not you reject common descent. Thanks, me. Now, tracking down many of these scientists was actually somewhat difficult because what the Dis Discovery Institute would dishonestly do was take the most prestigious organization that was ever affiliated with this individual, and they would put that beside their name. For example, um, it didn't matter if you had gone to um, University of Florida, let's say, for your freshman year in undergrad, and then the rest of your time spent at you know an unaccredited university, Florida State is where you were shown to be a scientist at. Um, a perfect example of this is Dr. DeWitt, who was listed to be at Case Western Reserve, but he never worked there. He went there um, for undergrad, I believe, and now works at Liberty University. Yes, Jerry Falwell's Liberty University. So that proved somewhat difficult to track these guys down. But nevertheless, I was unable to contact four out of the 39 biologists. Um, I just got the emails returned to me, one able to contact. Now, that reduced the number of available biologists from 39 to 35. 19 of those 35 individuals did not respond whatsoever. Um, I sent two volleys of emails, they just didn't respond, were busy, whatnot. So that left me with 16 of these individuals that actually responded, which is, considering the fact that I had to started out with 39, um, that's a pretty good response. What I found out was that 14 of those 16 actually accept common descent, whereas only two out of the 16 reject it. Now, I'll go into this in depth here in a minute, but something that immediately popped out is that many of these individuals that had supposedly been put on this list were very, very angry. They felt extremely misled, as some of these emails will show, and in fact, many of them had requested to be removed seven years ago, and they're still on the list. Now, just for accuracy's sake, it should be noted that one biologist on the list, Paddle Pun, did respond to me. However, he refused to answer my question in three volleys of emails, and each time seemed only interested, not in answering or discussing the issue, but trying to sell me things. So I removed him and counted him in the list of no response. So let's examine this list and get a quick visual of it. This is the original list with 101 members. Now, this is a list after I block out everybody who's not a biochemist or biologist. Now this is a list 
after I remove all the people that I couldn't contact because their email sent back is undeliverable. Now I'm um, just filling in the people that gave me no response, and now what we're left with are the names that actually responded, the 16. Okay, so now let's see what the list looks like after I remove all the people who accept Common Descent and Evolution and shouldn't be on the list. We're left with two names out of 101. This is the Discovery Institute's own list. Two out of 101 of the names are biologists who actually reject Common Descent. So now let's actually get to the email. First, let's look at Dr. Fred Sigworth's email. He says, no, I don't reject Common Descent. I've taken my name off that list because intelligent design has become weighted with much more than I've expected. My favorite book on the subject is Ken Miller's Finding Darwin's God. The man is recommending that I read Ken Miller, yet the Discovery Institute has him on a list of people who don't accept evolution. Next is Dr. Dan Quibbler. He replies, Whitney, no, I don't reject common descent, nor do I reject evolution. Skeptical is putting it a bit too strong in my case, as it makes it sound like I'm a biological intelligent design advocate, which I'm not. Professor Carl Koval actually wrote a statement on the um, issue, which I'll actually link you guys to in the comments of this video. It says, by signing the statement, well, part of it says, by signing the statement, I discovered that I had joined an intelligent design movement. Um, a little bit later on it says, In fact, during the many public lectures I've given over the past 15 years on the subject, I don't recall ever saying that evolutionary theory was wrong. On the contrary, I've defended the more objective aspects of evolution, often to the disappointment of people in the audience who are inclined to believe the claims of young Earth creationists, despite the overwhelming scientific evidence against such beliefs. I support the role of skepticism in science and try to impart the importance of healthy skepticism to my students. Now, this man, once again, does not reject common descent. Dr. Ralph Seelk says, not in principle. I think there are many cases of good evidence for common descent. Here's an email I received from Dr. Michael Behe, the founder of the Irreducible Complexity Movement. In it, he, and I've shown this in my other videos, he unequivocally, without doubt, accepts the fact that we share a common ancestor with the great apes. Now let's take a look at the two men on the list who actually do reject common ancestry. The first was listed as a neurosurgeon for Case Western University, Dr. David DeWitt. However, in trying to track him down, I realized that he had never in his life worked for um, Case Western Reserve. He instead is the chair of the biology department at Jerry Falwell's Liberty University. Yes, that Jerry Falwell. He told me that he absolutely rejects common descent of living things, and he um, sent me a link to Answers in Genesis, as well as a site that um, sells his book, that I could read and learn about it. Um, curious and kind of baffled by this, I, I asked him, or I replied back, asking him as a scientist how he would explain the pattern of endogenous retroviruses, um, why multiple independently assembled phylogenetic trees from every single discipline in science, including the fossil record, all line up seamlessly, which is only explainable by common descent, and, and that's basically it, and he refused to reply. Now, the only other biologist on the list who I contacted that rejects common ancestry was Dr. Clarence Fouch. Um, he seemed like a very nice guy, however, he asked me what I meant by common descent. Um, he said that it is statistically impossible to generate these nucleic acid sequences randomly, which is committing an enormous statistical fallacy. Um, he didn't know what endogenous retroviruses were, or the evidence regarding that. Um, he also made the same genes common design um, argument as well, which is a huge, huge, huge telling sign that I'm actually addressing in my next video. So he was a very nice guy, and he does legitimately reject common descent, but I do have to question exactly how much he knows about evolution. If you recall, this is the list with all the non-biologists blacked out. Let's go ahead and reinstate them. Also, let's go ahead and ignore the fact that 88% of the people contacted on the list accept evolution and common descent, and let's treat every single person on this list as rejecting common ancestry, regardless of their field. Now, According to the U.S. Department of Labor, there are 3,661,320 um, scientists, biological scientists in the U.S. Now remember, this isn't the, the blacked out version. This is scientists, period, in the U.S. What happens when we divide 101 over that number? You get 0.00275% rejecting evolution. Now, in other words, that's one scientist for every 36,500 are rejecting evolution, and this is by their own admission given them every mathematical concession possible to try and help that statistic in their favor. And remember, this factor is artificially high by at least 5,000 percent, because I'm counting everybody on this list as a biologist and as rejecting evolution, which I've already shown isn't anywhere near the case. 
please check out my other videos and thank you for